The last example application of second order linear differential equations we're going to consider are LRC series circuits. We've looked at circuits before in linear models, um, first order problems. The difference now is we're going to include all three components we talked about earlier, not just two at a time, but all three in a circuit, which is in series. So you have an external energy source, voltage source, an inductance indicated by the inductance uh, proportional ratio L, the resistance indicated by R, and the capacitance indicated by C. Remember L and C, those devices there, capacitance and inductance are storage, um, uh, unit, electrical units for storing charge. So according to Kirchhoff's voltage law, you can represent the conservation of energy or the conservation of voltage being supplied by the system in terms of how it's utilized across the series circuit. Voltage across the inductance can be represented by L times di dt, the rate of change of the current with respect to time, plus uh, the voltage in the resistance is indicated by Ohm's law, is actually R times I. And then for the capacitance, it's 1 over the capacitance value C times Q, which is the charge in the system. If you recall that current is really the rate of change of the charge in the system, um, then you can rewrite this equation as a second order linear differential equation in the charge. So the voltage is now represented in terms of charges and, and the, their higher order derivatives. So here now we have the voltage being represented in the inductance as L times the second derivative Q with respect to T. The voltage in the resistance is R times Q to T. Again, we have that same term we had before, and that's equal to the external voltage source. If the external voltage source is zero, then what we're really modeling is the charge that's left in the system by itself, and those are called free electronic vibrations. Now, it turns out you can model how the charge goes to zero very much the same way of how the displacement goes to zero that we did for the mass spring systems, and you can actually talk about the, the, the electrical vibrations being overdamped, critically damped, or underdamped according to these relationships between the resistance and the inductance and capacitance. If R squared minus uh, 4L over C is strictly positive, you have an overdamped electrical vibration system where eventually the charge will go to zero without very much oscill oscillations at all. Critically damped, we already know what that means. In this case, it's R squared minus 4L divided by C. Uh, that would have to be equal to zero. And if R squared minus 4L divided by C is less than zero, you have an underdamped um, electrical vibration system. In each of those three cases, though, the general solution defining the charge function has a factor of this uh, form e to the minus rt, r is resistance, divided by 2 times L, the inductance. So what's going to happen is the charge is going to go to zero eventually as t goes to infinity. The question is how does it go to zero? Very much like how did the displacement of the mass spring system go to zero? And also if you don't have any resistance and you don't have any external voltage sources, which your modeling is sometimes called the simple harmonic. So what we're going to do is just a very simple example of an underdamped series circuit, just so we can get a sense of how we would model a second order equation in this case. So let's look at an example of a underdamped LRC series circuit. So we'll draw a picture. Let's suppose you have an external energy source. We'll probably actually set it to zero, but we'll draw it in. We will just go ahead and say it's equal to zero. Here's our inductance. Here's our resistance. And here's our capacitance. And let's use proper notation here for units. Let's say a quarter Henry on the um, in, on the um, Inductance, 10 ohms on the resistance, and 0 0.001 farads for capacitance. You could assume the initial charge is some value Q0. The units would be coulombs, typically represented by a capital C. And we'll assume that the initial current is zero as well. Okay which is the derivative, recall, of Q. So that's another way of saying Q prime of zero is zero. 
Okay, same thing. These are the same. All right, so what we now can do is use the equations that we had before. We've got our values here for L. We have R and we have C. We can plug those in to our modeling equations. So we will have 1 over uh, 4, 1 fourth, which is L, times, and save us some notation, the second derivative of the charge. We'll use some prime notation, same to room here. Plus the resistance 10 times um, the derivative of the charge, Q. And then if C is 0.001, then 1 over that will be 1,000. So we'll have 1,000 times Q. And we'll assume that we have no external voltage with zero. Clean this up by multiplying through by four. What we have now is Q double prime plus 40 Q prime plus 4,000 times Q is equal to zero. And if we were to solve that uh, second order equation, uh, we would see we would get complex roots and turns out the charge equation will look like something like this, e to the minus 20t times c1 cosine of 60t plus c2 times sine of 60t. So it's definitely under damped like we saw with the mass spring system. With your initial conditions, you could show that c1 will be whatever the initial charge was, q0. And you can show that C2 would be a third of that initial charge, Q0. So your final charge equ uh, equation describing how it's going to go to zero will be your initial charge in the system times e to the minus 20t times cosine 60t plus one third, because we factored the Q0 out there, times sine of 60t. So you can see what's going to happen in time is definitely going to go to zero. Uh, again, we could check our values to make sure it's under damped according to the relationships um, that we mentioned before between R squared and 4L divided by C. Again, L was 1 quarter. C was 0 0.001, which means 1 over C is 1,000. And R is equal to 10. So we can check, in fact, R squared minus 4L divided by C would be quantity 10 squared minus 4 times 1 quarter multiplied by 1,000 because 1 over C would be 1,000. And that's certainly going to be, what, 100 minus 1,000, which is definitely less than zero in your, in your electrical vibration system is under -day. So this gives you another example of how all the work we did in the mass spring system actually has a great analogy and the solution of um, fairly complicated series circuits using inductance, resistance, and capacitance.